Hi, it's Pastor Jeff, and we're going to continue our devotional walk through the book of Joel. Today, looking at verses 4 through 12 in chapter 1. Now, let me remind you, we've already seen in the opening three verses of Joel that it is God who is speaking. He's speaking to everyone. He's reminding them to take a close, hard look all around them and realize they've never seen anything like this in the same way that you and I are to contextualize this to look around us and realize that we've never seen anything like this. And ultimately to be reminded that it will be our responsibility to tell our children, who are then to tell their children, who then in turn are to tell their children. Now, as we come into verse 4 and we walk through verse 12, what we find God doing through Joel is giving us a portrait of the devastation that has gotten their attention. The devastation that God is using for the express purpose of pointing forward to Christ, to the day of the Lord, which will come and bring the ultimate judgment of Jesus upon all the world. Now, what we find in this writing, verses 4 through 12, is a defining and a describing. The emphasis really is more on the description of this devastation. As we will see in verse 15, the definition of this destruction is the day of the Lord. In a micro sense, this is a up close and personal day of the Lord in a micro sense, which is pointing forward to the macro day of the Lord, the eternal day of the Lord that will usher in Christ and his judgment when the Lion of Judah will come and he will put down the law for the last time and he will judge, separating out the wheat from the weeds, the sheep from the goats, the found from the lost, the followers from the fake. And we find in Joel very descriptive language. He's telling us that the locust swarm that has totally devastated everything within their field of vision, everything that is in their experiences has been affected in a devastating way by this temporary locust swarm, which is telling them to look forward to the eternal Lord and Savior. Now, for our purposes, and again, I just want to focus in on the description and the defining. What we hear in verses 4 through 12 is ultimately a drying up. Everything has been dried up, and we see the utter devastation that is a forerunning example of the day of the Lord. And so, for our purposes, for you, friend, I pray that you will look around. In fact, since it's only been two days since I preached the sermon that opened up this book of Joel and, and began this process of laying out the devotional that is a walk through Joel, nothing has changed in terms of those aspects of our reality, the things that are happening all around us, all around the world. Nothing has changed to alleviate those negative challenges, those aspects of devastation, but instead there have been more things added on a global scale. In the last 12 hours, I've learned that North Korea has attacked a South Korean uh, position and has added to the provocation that is only ratcheting up the temperature and the risks of a global impacting battle. Again, these are what Jesus said would be the birthing pains to let you know that the day of the Lord is near. At the same time, literally, as I woke up this morning, I learned again in the last 12 hours of a military confrontation between India and China, where they have fought to the point of lives being lost. These two global nuclear superpowers able to come to a place of battle just in the last 12 hours, escalating what continues to be ongoing tensions over a border that is up near the Tibetan line. I, again, I encourage you, look around, 
Look around, see the devastation, see the approaching aspects of the day of the Lord. I'm reminded that here in our country, we have seen in the town that Kim and I used to live in, what was called the 500 year flood just a few weeks ago. Again, there are multiple aspects that if you and I will look around, if we will see the present tense destruction and what's happening, we've in our country, we've had another riotous event happen that again, just built on what I shared with our folks in the sermon on Sunday. Things, my friends, are pointing to the day of the Lord. Look around, take it in. We may not, or we may be dealing with locust swarms that are devastating. We may be dealing with lovelessness. We may be dealing with lawlessness. We may be dealing with natural disasters of cataclysmic proportion. All of this is intentionally telling us to look up, to be ready for what is a day of the Lord which is near and getting closer every day. In verse 8 of chapter 1, we're told as a part of the response, and that will be our focus in the next devotional, but a part of our, our response is to mourn and to grieve. The scripture says we are to grieve like one who is about to become married, the virgin who is about to become married and then learns that her her husband-to-be has been killed. Imagine that kind of grief on your wedding night to find that your would-be spouse has been killed. That's the kind of devastation. That's the kind of grieving. Look around, friends, and fear not. If you have the faith of Christ, you fear not. And at the same time, you look around with open eyes, eternal eyes, gospeled eyes. And recognize that we should be grieving what is happening all around us if we have a heart for the lost, who when Jesus comes, if they are not ready, will be damned eternally. Let us grieve that reality while simultaneously praising and worshiping and thanking our Lord, if we are biblical Christians, that that day will usher us home and this whole sin-soaked swamp of a world and its dark and destructive and deceiving experiences will be over for the Christian and only just beginning for those who are met with a lion of Judah when they're not yet surrendered to him as Lord Jesus. Amen and amen.